Here it is. You've been waiting for part two. It's just like yesterday to me. Actually, it was just a couple of minutes. <laughs> we have got the information for you about these financials, and it is coming from the CEO herself. So you know you can trust everything you're about to hear. Thanks for staying with me, Kate, and sharing this information with the investors. I know they're going to appreciate it too. I certainly hope so. <laughs> I'm sure they will. I so, never know what to expect from the investor. Sometimes I think something's going to resonate and it doesn't. And I'm like, well, I tried. <laughs> so. Right, right, right. You, you can't second guess investors. I mean, you know, we've got personal lives that are affecting our judgment. We have the economy affecting our judgment. We have greed affecting our judgment, fear. So it's really tough to get ahead of the investor. But when you've got something good, kind of like that field of dreams. If you build it, they will come. Well, if you advertise it after you build it, they will come. And that's what's going on with your company now. With you being out there is everywhere, everywhere from Time to Newsweek to Fox News to little shows like this. I mean, you are covering the spectrum of viewers. And now you're even going into infomercials, which that is an entirely other market that is very strong as far as I'm concerned. You guys are looking at millions of dollars probably over the next year by the end, wouldn't yep. you say? Oh, for sure. Yeah, we're pacing big revs. We're excited. I mean, if you if you, if you you saw the board that we have in here with our the numbers we're pacing, you, you'd be very excited. So yeah, lots of good so, stuff. What have you got for us in part two that we couldn't reveal in part one? Yeah, I wanted to review. So as we said before, the number that gets you know, revealed to you in the financials is parsed up into six pieces. So it's only a portion of um, the actual revenue. We changed our pricing model from, we don't do 12 months of payments anymore. So we only have um, 997 one time, uh, six payments of 250 or three payments of 400. So we realize a lot more revenue quicker now. And because we don't have a 97, most people just pay the 997. 95% of the sales are, are uh, 997. And that wasn't right. like that before. Less than half was 997. So we, like in October, we started this. So in the last quarter of the year, we, our revenue went through the roof. So just to give you an idea, I'm going to give you two numbers for Q4 and two numbers for January and a pacing number for February. So okay. Total new sales revenue that we realized that we actually sold in Q4 was $348,000. That's what we sold new business in Q4. Uh -huh. But in Q4, our total realized revenue, because we had forward-bearing revenue, was $429,630.70. So $429,000 in Q4. And I right. said in the last segment... We're pacing to do more than that in February alone, just in that one month. Right, right, and right. In January, new revenue was $303,000 just in January. 303000 new revenue in January. In, Q, in Q1 this year so far, this is just from 1-1 to 2-9, Okay. $398,363. So in five weeks, we did almost 400000 in revenue. Q1 realized revenue so far. So all the forward-bearing revenue, $446,000 in five weeks. Whoa. Yeah, you've gotten it into the next two yeah. gears. Yeah. Yeah. And that's... Yeah. And, and we're you know, it's easy February. to figure out how many people you're helping. You know, it's basically a thousand dollars a person. It's like, wow, they helped 300 people that month. And that's the way I was doing it. How many people did they just help? How many more people did they just help? That is huge. The money is great. That's exciting. And for every dollar you're making, somebody is being helped. God, I love your business. Yeah. I mean, you got to think like, so the average person that works with us ends up with $2,000 a month for life. That's a pretty solid investment. You spend nine ninety seven once, you get twenty four thousand a year. That's pretty good. That's pretty good math. I mean, yeah, people I can see why you have an eighty percent closing rate. Yeah, well, people are putting away cheese, and um, you know their roofs are leaking, and now they're going on vacation, and getting a new roof on their home. We're we have actually probably helped 
a hundred veterans not commit suicide. When I was at the gym today, one of the little girls that works for me was at the gym and she walked up to me. She said, Kate, I got a call on my phone and it's a veteran and they need to talk to someone right now. They're in the hospital wanting to commit suicide with their PTSD. So I took the phone, talked them down off the ledge and went back to my workout. Like this is the kind of stuff that enters our day every day. It's not just the money. It's helping people get closure, making sure that they don't kill themselves. Um, all of our older population who's lost their wives, our policy is we do not hang up on veterans if they are trying to share something of value with us. So, you know, part of our headcount is this customer service staff so we can support the veteran community wow. the way that they need to be supported. That's so. going above and beyond by a long shot. I mean, really is. That's that's called caring, you know, and there's not a lot of business that got time to care for their customers. It's just business. Let's move on to the next customer. So that's and I can see how this job could actually be wearing on your employee. Oh, my gosh. Yeah, at, at least one person in our company uh, calls me crying every day because they either heard a story that hurt their feelings about someone getting assaulted or just something that was so touching. Like we had a, we helped a whole family. There was four of them all served in the Marine Corps. And the son that brought the family to us killed himself last week. And on our company call, all 50 of us sat and had you know, kind of five minutes of silence, like half the team was like in tears because we talk to veterans every day, you know, and it makes me like sad to even think about it, but, um, Absolutely. but we can't just be so, you know, um, brazen and just blow and go and just sell and just treat people like, you know, they're just a number. These are human beings that, that need our help. And that's why I think it's so profound what we do, because we spend so much time talking to veterans. They get a lot of value for that 997. I don't know anybody who gets more value for 997 than our veterans do. It sounds like it. And like I said, above and beyond, you know, uh, going out and helping the homeless vets really is not directly related to the business. No. But does doing good have to be related to the business indirectly it's going to help the business but directly it doesn't affect the bottom line but it changes a life and by golly if that isn't the bottom line then i don't know what is you know well it does kind of help our bottom line in a way because it gets us visibility right right but when we talk to veterans about what we do we talk about how we help homeless vets, how we help people with PTSD, how we support PTSD ranches and a lot of them go you know what I was mad that you charge, but now I understand why you do because you go do good work with the money that I'm going to give you. And they feel more comfortable paying for a service that they think should be free. And so I think it does in some way impact our bottom line because it makes people realize we're good people. Do you anticipate any other companies approaching you to want to work with you? You know, like there's these exoskeleton companies for people who need crutches and stuff. And it's a new robotic way to walk. It was all this new type of stuff that's being approved to be paid for by the VA. News is coming out about this stuff. Do you anticipate since you're going to be getting so much attention and you are going to be in everybody, I mean, Vetcom is going to become a common word. It really is. Do you anticipate other companies will approach you and want to align with you? So a couple of things, and I should have mentioned this in the previous segment, but um, we actually have a whole division Not now. Forever. <laughs> we have a whole division now that's B2B. So um, we actually just made a relationship with a company that has thousands of employees. They have 400 veterans that they employ. I'll, we'll get to them in, a, in another press release soon, but we're doing a trial with them. So they would basically be, we would be bringing in, you know, 400,000 in revenue if we, if they decide to partner with us. So a lot of companies have retention issues with veterans because veterans are a little gypsy hearted when they get out of the military, they, they move around a lot. So they were thinking, what if we pay for them to go through your service and, and we will pay for it as long as they stay for two years so we can retain them as a, as a, uh -huh. as a employee. Yeah. So we're just marketing that. So that's one big thing that we're doing. But we get approached by companies almost every day. Every time I go on the news, a company reaches out. So I have a division of people that, that work all those deals in the background. So you'll probably see sometime in the summer we'll do, you know, we have three or four big um, companies cooking right now. Um, they're not at a point where I want to completely share it, but they're definitely staged in our business. And we, we think that we can do, you know, one to 3 million this year, just in B2B. 
as long as, you know, some of these contracts come through. So we're going to hire an entire workforce that just does B2B onboarding for companies. So there's a, there's a lot of big things coming, you know, we probably need to have another one of these, you know, in a couple of months, but, um, no problem. You, you have a lot of potential going on, uh, between you, your new public relations companies helping you with media and the, uh, uh, on TV, you have the workforce growing, having your face out there for Congress, you know, that brings light to all of this as well. Yeah. There is so much potential. And now you tell us that you are being approached on a regular oh, basis yeah. by Every companies. So, so the potential is really unlimited. And what we're looking at here, B2B, a few million, just your own in-house re revenues, over million, two million. So we're looking at multi-millions in mm -hmm. the next year, easily. Oh, easily without even really, it's not even a stretch goal. You know, our stretch goal is much bigger than that, but we're right. a lot of people are like, wow, you guys just picked up speed overnight. It's like, no, we've been working on this for three years. We mindfully staged our business so that we can serve veterans well and grow at the same time so we can stay in business. But now we're in a growth cycle where we can magnify our business and grow pretty fast. So I think that, you know, these numbers I just outlined to you are incredible considering where we were in Q3 and Q4. But Absolutely. I think I think when we wrap up this first quarter, there's no way we don't do more than a million in, in Q1. No way. We're already paced to do well, well over that. So you got to think Q2 is if we've been doubling every quarter, you can do the basic math of where we're headed. So. Well, make sure in the headline of your news, you put that big percentage gain year over year. And you make it massive because I'll tell you what, every time I post one of those pieces of news, it gets a lot of attention, big yeah. increases, because that's the bottom line of any business. How much money are you making? How fast is it growing? Am I missing the boat? Maybe I better get on quick. Well, we so, did seven fifty dollars um, last year in revenue. Okay. For, Only for the whole year. For the whole year. We'll do more than that in the first two months of this year. Yeah, that's 750000 Correct. 750,000. Yeah. And we'll yeah, do yeah. more than that just in the first two months of this year. You're That's like the uh, bamboo plant. You know that? Uh -huh. <laughs> a bamboo <laughs> plant, you put it in the ground and you water it, you give it sun. Three years later, it hasn't grown an inch. You keep giving it love and attention. It, five years, it hasn't grown an inch. And then all of a sudden it grows a foot a day. And in yep. 30 days, it's 30 feet tall and you'll never get rid of it. Once it's growing, it right. is there for life. Yes. That's what you remind me of long time coming. Now you're not going to miss me. Yep. And I'm here for good. I'm here. I'm not going anywhere. Yeah. I mean, this is definitely success by design. We have very big plans. We spend a lot of time um, formulating like where we're going, what our partnerships are, what needs do we have? How do we get overhead down? We, we are a very nimble team. We are all in the same boat, always rowing the same direction. If we see a cancer, we carve it out. We're, right. we're a very unique company doing a unique thing. And if I were a shareholder, I'd be proud to be a shareholder. I know that I'm proud to be the CEO of this company. And I think, you know, anybody who's playing games with our stock price is going to be met with uh, force <laughs> when we release the financials and certainly something like this. You're going to be sad that you didn't take us seriously. And that's what you deserve, quite frankly. Yeah, that's the thing about your business is the more successful you get, the more successful you'll probably get because it's all about exposure. And yep. when you make one vet happy, how many vets for friends has he got? And he's oh, going to okay. tell every one of his buddies. And I mean, that's that's how MCI got to be so big and became a competitor of AT&T, friends and family. If we yep. can get you talking, we've got the world. So well, we went like kind of viral in Japan last week. We helped like three people. And then all of a sudden, every day, three or four people are calling in from Japan. Oh, my buddy sent me. My buddy sent me. It, it spreads like wildfire because... We did a count where every veteran over their life cycle with us, the average person gives us three people. That's the average. So some people give us a ton, some people give us none, but the average is three people. So you got to see at some point exponentiality happens when we reach critical mass. With it. We, we, we think that when we um, get to probably June, 
all of a sudden, just the referral business will take on a life of its own where it will actually be bigger than the business that's coming in from ad revenue. I mean, I from ad revenue. That. Yep. The exponential growth will catch up and bypass you. And then right. you'll be trying to catch up to it, which is right. a good thing. People yes. getting in line for your services so that they can get the help that they need. And it does sound from what I was reading, your service is pretty quick. You know, you don't drag this out for long. You want to get them what they need. And you know, that's the great thing. You've been through it. You know exactly where to walk, what door to open, what doors to avoid, what to put on the paper so that you don't have this back and forth. Let's get it right. Come on, let's try it again. So you're giving them not just the service, but the education and the guarantee, as you said. So I like your company from top yeah. to bottom. And if it wasn't you in there, I don't know if I'd like it so much. You've got a great, con I'm serious. You've got a great concept. You've got a great business model, but a person who has, you've been the, you've been your own customer. Yeah. You were your number one customer to start this all off. So you don't, you have the experience to understand what every single vet is feeling. And that is going to set you apart from any other CEO who ever held that job in that company. You're right. the right person. You're the right man for the job. <laughs> no, I appreciate that. It, you know, it's, it's a lot when you switch out a CEO, especially on the Pubco side, you know, I was always running Vetcom. But then to step in on the Pubco side, you know, I'm sure shareholders are like, well, let's see what this is, right? Let's see what this is going to be. And I think that I've proven to be um, a good leader with a good vision. And I would just ask that everybody stay in the boat and row with us and, and be excited because we're, we're going places quick. Well, I think we've pretty much covered everything we needed to cover there. Folks, go back over those numbers. Look at what you see in the financials and then listen to what you just told you the real numbers are in the background. They can only put on the books what's actually come in, but they're still due all the rest of the money that, that is part of these contracts. Well, the money has come in. So the misconception is we don't have the money yet. We get the money on day one. The money's in our account immediately. Right. The way we account for the money is different. We already have the money. We, we are not waiting for it. Okay. Have, that's <laughs> that's good. We had the money last year too, right? It's just, it's just the way we account for it because oh. we have a guarantee. They only let us realize on the books a sixth of it at a time. But in reality, we get all the money up front. So when the numbers I gave you, we have all that money already. Okay. Yeah, we are not waiting for the money. The numbers I gave you, we already have it. So it's just the books that lag behind. You <laughs> that, that lag that's behind. That's way to have it. I would rather have the money and have the books lagging than vice versa. <laughs> yeah, I mean, it's definitely the books don't tell the story of our actual success, and that's what people need to understand. Our realized revenue is high. And I presume that will be the case as we move forward with each financial. We'll only be seeing a portion of what's Correct. really there. Yep. Okay. But when people start to get accustomed to it, I will make sure that after the financials come out, we talk about the real revenue. Like in a month, for instance, when we sell a million in a month, we will have realized like 95% of that revenue. We won't be waiting for it. Right. Yeah. And that's when we'll have you on to celebrate that first million. Oh my gosh. Here's, That'll here's probably be three weeks. <laughs> right? I'll be like, hey, we got to get on. What's going on? <laughs> Honestly, I know you're going to get busier and busier because you have not just a business, but you have a lot of concerns for vets personally. You are out there fighting for them. I understand that your time is going to be precious. And I really appreciate the time you spend with us on this show because I'm a little guy. I realize that. So your time is very, very special to me. And I want you to know that I appreciate it from the bottom of my heart. And I appreciate you too, being so thoughtful and giving me this platform to really share, you know, my heart and our um, vision with the shareholders. So it's, it's a big deal to me and um, you're a blessing. So thanks. We interrupt your regular broadcast to bring you an updated special announcement from Kate Monroe herself. Keep in mind, this video was actually recorded three weeks ago when we did our first half of this interview. This second half we have just been hanging on to until the news presses came out about the financials where they are coming out in one day. They're coming out on Monday and she's got the real numbers for us and she's gonna share those with you right now. Hey there, a little quick update for this thread. Um, we have really done some amazing work since the last time we did a video. So I wanted to give you the real number for Q1. 
Uh, drum roll, please. One million thirty-seven thousand dollars in top line revenue. That, that, that's we still have revenue to collect, but one million thirty-seven thousand dollars went into the bank, and that's pretty exciting if you consider the numbers you know that were done uh, in all our real estate updates. We're just really excited over here. One thousand eighty-three veterans were helped just in Q1. We because we have a guarantee, we realize it like a six, a six, a six, a six. So the number that you saw for last year is only gonna be portion of the revenue. We are not waiting for revenue. All, all that revenue from last year, this year, already realized, already in the bank. I'm saying this so that you as shareholders, future potential um, investors, shareholders, you can realize the way that we actually account as a public company is totally different than the way in which we realize our revenue. So, I mean, we did a million thirty-seven thousand in Q1, and that's just a fraction of what we're gonna do this year. Stay excited. We will have uh, Kate back when she wants to come back and she wants to share something. She has an open seat here anytime she wants. Won't it be great when she gets into the Congress and I actually have a congressman on my show? Oh, my right? God. I'll be crossing borders then. <laughs> yeah, well, you got to tell people in California 49th District from Del Mar to Dana Point, vote for Kate. I need, I need all the help I can get to get there. CA 49. <laughs> Go ahead and plug it in there. I want to see you get, I'm not in California, but you're going to affect all the Congress. You know, it only takes one bad apple to spoil the bunch. Well, one person with perfume can make everybody smell pretty. So I think you'll do wonderful once you get there. And I don't think you'll have a problem getting there. I think your reputation for what you're doing for those that mean the most for America, they will catapult you up into there. They will put you in there because you're worthy, not because of what you believe in, but because of what you do. And that's going to make you different than every other politician out there. So I'm looking forward to that day. And I hope you will come back when you do cross that line. Yes, I certainly yeah. will. You have a good day. See you, folks. We'll see you next time. See you, Kate. See you.